Cam Fellow is one of the best horses ever run. It's Cam Fellow on top as they come to the wire. Because truthfully, that horse in itself belongs to the people. Born May 14, 1979, at Walnut Hall in Lexington, Kentucky, Cam Fella was a product of champion bloodlines from both sides of his pedigree. His sire was Triple Crown winner Most Happy Fella, and his dam, Nan Cam's father, Brett Hanover, had both Triple Crown and Horse of the Year honors on his resume. It's Brett Hanover coming to the wire. A small horse at 15.1 hands, Cam Fella didn't look like a champion, but from the moment he stepped on the racetrack, it was evident that Cam Fella was destined for greatness. He's going to win it, a sensational performance. That greatness followed him long past his race career as a sire to champions and world record holders. Cam Luck, three in a row. In an epic battle, Jenna's beach boy for fame. A three-time Breeders' Crown winner, Eternal Cam Nation. Despite his small stature, he caught the attention of Canadian trainer Doug Arthur, who purchased him at the 1980 Tattersall Fall Yearling Sale for $19,000. Aware of his colt's physical immaturity, Arthur chose not to start training him in the early spring of 1981, but instead patiently waited for him to grow. This patience paid off almost immediately when Cam started racing in August, posting a 3-3-3 record in 11 starts culminating with a win in the Valedictory Series Final at Greenwood Raceway in 2.02 and 2 against a field of three-year-olds. Trainer driver Pat Crow had been quietly watching Cam Fellow's final two-year-old starts and when he got word the Bay Colt was for sale, he suggested to Norm Clements of Uxbridge, Ontario that the horse would make a good investment. Clements in turn approached his friend and fellow racing enthusiast Norm Faulkner of nearby Stouffville about sharing the purchase of the horse. The deal was sealed as equal partners, and for the asking price of 140,000 US, Cam Fella was theirs. Under his new ownership, and with Pat Crow managing his training regimen, Cam Fella started his three year old season with a very impressive 11 straight wins. That streak was broken, however, when he was interfered with during the $300,000 Los Alamitos Spring Championship his richest race until that time. In a tough spot looking for somewhere to go is Cam Fella. This proved to be only a temporary stumbling block. He was supplemented into the first two legs of the 1982 edition of Pacing's Triple Crown, the Cane Pace and the Messenger Pace, and the investment paid off. Inside, Cam Fella on the inside, stride for stride for the lead. Through the stretch, Cam Fella on the inside with Merger on the outside. It's Cam Fella and Merger, Cam Fella and Merger, Cam Fella in front. After defeating heavily favored Merger in both the elimination and the finals of the Kane, he followed that up in the second leg, grinding out a valiant score in the Messenger. As they come for the wire, Cam Fella on the inside, Merger on the outside. They come to the wire. That's Cam Fella, Nicholas Lobel trying to close. Cam Fella wins the Messenger. His season continued as he zigzagged across the continent and in doing so won the Monticello OTB Classic, the Prix de Tay. The winner of the 1982 Prix d'été, Le Vainqueur, Cam Fella, les voici, here they are. The Queen City Pace, now known as the North America Cup. It's Cam Fella by a race, Charles Mills, second, Arthur Ashton, third, and Cam Fella wins the Queen City But it was during his commanding victory in the 1982 Confederation Cup that he was first tagged with a nickname that would undoubtedly stick and become synonymous with him, the Pacing Machine. They're all chasing Cam Fella, the pacing machine. It's Cam Fella, he's gonna win it. A battle for the other positions. Cam Fella, the winner of the final in 158 and one. Cam Fella would go on to become the best three-year-old pacer in North America with his record 28 wins in 33 starts, earning $879,000. He was named the 1982 Horse of the Year in both the U.S. and Canada, all in spite of not qualifying for the Meadowlands Pace and being ineligible for the Little Brown Jug. At the end of his three-year-old season, his connections began investigating breeding farms. Despite his stellar resume, there was skepticism in the breeding community about his ability to be a successful stallion because he was a Ridgeling. Rather than settling for a breeding contract that wasn't at the level his owners wanted, the decision was made to continue racing him as a four-year-old. It's Cam Fella!
Gala on top as they come to the wire. Arguably this, his final competitive season, was his most successful, although it did not start out smoothly. Cam Phillip on the inside with Jesse Trinity. Cam Phillip, Jesse Trinity coming on. In his first eight starts, he managed only a 2-4-2 and two tally and was defeated three times straight by Perfect Out, the only horse to beat him more than once. The pacing machine bounced back in unprecedented fashion. Week in and week out, with dogged determination, Cam Fella took on all comers, steadily racking up win after win and leaving in his wake all the best horses of his era. Cam Fella in front and driving. See, Vic, those two hit the wire together. It's Cam Fella holding on to win it. Collecting trophies and win photos in a list of the most prestigious pacing races, including the Stuart Fraser Memorial, Canadian Pacing Derby, the Frank Ryan Memorial, Blue Bonnets Challenge, and U.S. Pacing Championships. 28 consecutive wins was the final tally he left on the record books. The bar set so high that it still stands 30 years later. He consistently beat horses that were considered better than he was, and he would win going head to head, face to face with them. Looking his competition in the eye, he would wear them down, relentless in his pursuit of winning. He became legendary for overcoming seemingly insurmountable leads. He was one of the grittiest standard bred racehorses to ever look through a bridle, and that tenacity enabled him to wear down his often faster competitors. Never were these qualities more evident than at the Meadowlands on a summer night in 1983. It's Fritz has a clear lead. He's pulling away from Campella. The lead is two and a half lengths with an eighth of a mile to the finish. Then by the back, Ideal Tenor is racing in third. It's Fritz draws off to a three length advantage. Campella stubbornly holding on to second. Ideal Tenor is racing in third. A sixteenth to the wire. It's Fritz. Campella is coming back. Campella has come back and he's going to win it. A sensational performance at 154 and two. He refused to be beaten and in the process, he established an ever-growing legion of fans. He's a marvel. He's really well named, the pacing machine. It's pure and simple. The horses that have to race with him and go stride to stride are up the track. He not only beats them, but he demoralizes them. Those dedicated fans faithfully gathered, regardless of where he raced, following him from track to track, the Camfella Express traveled by bus, by plane, whatever it took to witness the feats of the horse that was fast becoming a legend. They cheered him on from Vancouver to Edmonton, to New Jersey to Florida, and points in between. They wore the pacing machine buttons. They had their picture taken in the winner's circle with him. It was one big party. He became a media sensation, garnering headlines as the momentum built. There was a movie produced, a song written, and television appearances by his connections. Our guests are the owners of Cam Fella, North America's finest harness racer, Norman Clements and Norman Faulkner. Cam Fella was a phenomenon. Fittingly, his race career concluded on the same track it began, Greenwood Raceway, on a bitterly cold December day, and not surprisingly, he visited the winner's circle one last time. Cam Fella all alone as they come to the wire. It's Cam Fella by three with Monkey Wrench driving on the outside. Cam Fella 28 straight, 157 and two. In just three racing seasons, Cam Fella won 88 of 105 starts and earned over $2 million, making him at the time the richest pacer in history. Cam Fella was the toast of the industry and was rewarded for his efforts when for the second year in a row, he was named Harness Horse of the Year in both the U.S. and Canada. While his racing career had drawn to a close, the next phase of his life was about to begin. Despite reluctance by breeding farms a year earlier, an agreement was reached, and he was moved to New Jersey's Stonegate Farm to begin his breeding career. Again, he excelled to unparalleled levels. He turned out dozens and dozens of great horses and was a prolific sire of prolific sires. In all, he sired 1,002 foals, over 80% raised, and over 30% earned over $100,000. 16 of his offspring were millionaires, including Eternal Cam Nation, Presidential Ball, Cam's Card Shark, Precious Bunny, and Cam Luck. His daughters proved to be prolific producers as well. Jenna's Beach Boy, with a mark of 147 and 3, and winner of 1.9 million, is out of one of Cam's daughters. And it's a world champion, Jenna's Beach Boy! 
In 1997, he was gelded due to cancer. While this marked the end of a 13-season breeding career, it also provided the opportunity for the final chapters of his life. His connection sent Cam on the road in a nostalgic whistle-stop farewell tour of North America so the great horse could visit his adoring public. They came out in throngs to relive the memories created during his racing career. At the conclusion of the tour, Cam Fella took a place of honor in the Hall of Champions at the Kentucky Horse Park, a fitting place for him to live out his retirement years where he could be admired and appreciated. He was not only the pacing machine, he was the people's horse. He was a horse for the ages, perhaps the likes of which will never be seen again. Here he comes, the pace. He just loves the race. Crows in the nose. Look at that fella go. Cam is his name. Racing is his game. Cam fella, cam fella, pacing on to fame. Cam fella, cam fella, pacing on to fame. New faces, the hopeful, the messenger and cane. Provincial, the sophomore, a champion to reign. He'll always be remembered as the pacing machine. <laughs> 